After being blown frightfully off course by strong winds during his return voyage from India, the famous ancient Greek explorer Eudoxus of Cyzicus found himself sailing north along Africa's east coast. As he made his way back home, he mingled with the natives of the region. And while ingratiating himself with one village over grain, wine, and cakes of pressed figs, he spotted something that appeared to be nothing out of the ordinary from a distance. Except, upon closer inspection, the artifact looked oddly familiar. It was a beautifully hand-carved wooden horse head that Eudoxus thought resembled those which decorated the end of some ship's prows. But it couldn't be. He was recognized as the man who discovered the open sea route to India while financed by one of the most powerful and educated monarchs on earth, the pharaoh of Egypt. If anybody, he would have at least heard rumors of an expedition that penetrated so deep into the unknown world. Nonetheless, the indigenous people confirmed his suspicions, adding, the piece belonged to a foreign ship found wrecked on their shores long ago. They believed the vessel came from the west. Eudoxus was bewildered. How could a ship of Mediterranean origin be right before his eyes? He brought the artifact home with him, and hoping somebody would recognize its origin, showcased the wooden horse head in port marketplaces throughout the Mediterranean. Many sailors felt it could be from the Spain-Morocco area, but no one has ever been able to determine how the ship got where it did. Unbeknownst to Eudoxus, perhaps lost in the throes of the Egyptian archives, there was a story from long before he of a pharaoh commissioning foreigners regarded as humanity's greatest sailors to circumnavigate the entire African continent. With that being said, these men and probably some women would not have necessarily understood that the landmass ended or was surrounded by water. For all they knew, a sheer cliff off the world's edge awaited just beyond the horizon. The Egyptian pharaoh, Necho II, who reigned from 609 to 595 BC, was nearing completion of his revolutionary canal linking the Nile River to the Red Sea. Moreover, he extended the Egyptian empire to the northern reaches of modern-day Syria, becoming the first pharaoh to cross the Euphrates River in nearly a thousand years, bucking his Egyptian subjects' commonly held fear of the sea. Necho II raised an elite navy that supplied his war marches along the Mediterranean coast, as well as patrolled the Red Sea. According to the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, he sent Phoenicians in ships, instructing them to sail on their return voyage past the pillars of Heracles, until they came into the Northern Sea and so to Egypt. So the Phoenicians set out from the Red Sea and sailed down Africa's east coast. Whenever autumn came, they would row to shore and plant seeds in the ground wherever they were. After the harvest, the journey continued. And in this way, after the better part of three years, they rounded the Strait of Gibraltar and arrived in Egypt. Herodotus writes, There they said, what some may believe, though I do not, that in sailing around Libya, Africa, they had the sun on their right hand. Ironically, the detail Herodotus adds almost haphazardly to justify his disbelief serves as evidence confirming the story. As the Phoenicians sailed west around the Cape of Good Hope, Africa's southern tip, the sun of the southern hemisphere would have risen and set on their right hand side. How might a person of Mediterranean antiquity have known this astronomical occurrence to even be conceivable? unless somebody had seen it with their own eyes. The Portuguese explorer Bartolomeu Diaz is the next person credited for sailing to the end of Africa. He did so in May of 1488, over 1,000 years after the alleged Phoenician expedition. Alrighty everybody, that's gonna do it for today's video. Let me know what you think. Did ancient Phoenicians actually circumnavigate Africa? Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.